The first question you must ask about any 39 year old quarterback is can he still physically throw the ball? This is week 18, the final game in a long arduous season for Aaron Rodgers. If you go back through recent seasons and look at the likes of Matt Ryan, Philip Rivers or Ben Roethlisberger, you see how their arm strength dwindles or completely drops off over the second half of the season. On this play, Rodgers is under centre and the Packers have called a shot play off of play action. He only has two receivers releasing into routes downfield, one a deep crossing route and one a vertical outside the numbers to the right side. The Lions are playing a single high safety who is drawn to the crossing route when the ball is snapped. This isolates the vertical route outside the numbers. Rodgers wastes no time in recognising it and loading up to attack it. From the end zone angle, we can see that Rodgers isn't on the far hash mark but he is a distance away from the near hash mark. This elongates the throw. He has a clean pocket with time to set and complete his throwing motion without pressure factoring into the play. Christian Watson is the Packers only wide receiver with any speed. He gets level with the defender covering him before making a good catch on a perfectly thrown ball from Rodgers. Watson couldn't separate past the receiver to make the throw easier because he was interfered with by the defender. Now let's note where the ball was released from and where it was caught at. Rodgers is standing on his own 32 yard line while Watson catches the ball on the opposition 15 yard line. In a straight line that would be 53 yards. With the angle it's comfortably more than 60. Rodgers isn't the quarterback he once was. He has more inconsistencies in his game than ever before, but he used to be a superhuman quarterback with logic defying consistency week to week. Now that he's 39, he's not that guy anymore, but he's still a top 10 quarterback, a top 10 quarterback who could win a Super Bowl with the right supporting cast. The Packers don't have that talent level anymore, but the Jets do. Since his physical skill set hasn't notably diminished, Rodgers is still capable of doing the spectacular on a regular basis. This play against the Miami Dolphins was one of the best plays made by any quarterback all season. Rodgers has two tight ends on the narrow side of the field and two receivers to his right on the wide side. His running back is going to stay in the block and the four routes that release downfield are all isolated from each other. That means there isn't an easy throw or an easy read for Rodgers early in the play. The Dolphins are blitzing a linebacker up the middle while the rest of the back seven plays zone coverage behind. Rodgers takes a snap and hits the top of a short drop looking right. His slant route is running into a second defender and his vertical route is well covered. As Rodgers looks right, the blitzing linebacker is coming through the running back on his blind side. He turns his eyes back to the left side but now he's at the mercy of the linebacker. Neither of his tight ends are open. He should be sacked here. He somehow shows off the quickness and awareness to avoid this rusher and then release the ball over a second pass rusher while fading backwards. At this point, if Rodgers is just throwing the ball away, it's a big win considering what the outcome of the play should have been based on how the defense beat the offense around him. But he's not throwing the ball away. He's actually going to hit his tight end's wheel route down the left sideline despite the receiver being blanketed in coverage. That's not just any tight end either, it's a backup blocking specialist, 40 year old Mercedes Lewis. The defensive back was right there, he couldn't have been in better coverage. The ball somehow passes his hand and drops into Lewis. This would be an amazing throw if Rodgers made it from a clean pocket. He made it while wilting backwards against pressure after evading a sack from another defender before that point. That's insane, almost as insane as giving snaps to Mercedes Lewis in the year 2023. But that's the other side of this story. The Packers supporting cast on offense for Rodgers this past season was truly atrocious and it helped contribute to his inconsistencies. He was responsible for some of it as well himself, but it was magnified by the talent around him. Here we have the Packers offense in the red zone against the Rams. The Packers have isolated Christian Watson on the narrow side with a three receiver row combination on the left side. The Rams defense is rushing four and playing two zone linebackers in the middle of the field so the rest of the defense can play aggressive man coverage. During his drop back, Rodgers looks quickly to his right but sees the linebacker drifting to that side. So his eyes go back to the left when he's at the top of his drop. It doesn't matter where he looks on this play, nobody is open and nobody's going to come open. The rookie Watson is a speed receiver, he's not a mismatch on a fade route against good coverage in a tight space like this. AJ Dillon is a big slow running back with limited ability as a receiver, he's also bracketed by two defenders in coverage here. Romeo Dubes is running an out route across the back of the end zone on the left side against off man coverage, he doesn't get open either. Alan Lazard's slant route is running into double coverage. Randall Cobb's out route flashes open for a split second but the defender is waiting there to undercut any ball that would be thrown his way. The Rams are getting great pressure off the edges so Rodgers needs to climb the pocket, but the pressure comes so quickly that his escape forward will close if he doesn't make that decision to move immediately after looking at his first read. You don't want your quarterback to make his first read and immediately look to run, so Rodgers doesn't do that. But as such, the pass rush collapses on top of him for the sack. In the same situation, the Detroit Lions use the same coverage. This time Rodgers has a triple bunch to his right and an isolated receiver to his left. It's Christian Watson. We can see the four down linemen who will chase the quarterback and the two defenders who will play zone in the middle of the field. Rodgers seemingly anticipates the coverage and looks to his left. Watson is running a curl out against a defensive back here and his route isn't working to the middle of the field so he should get open because there's no help in the spot 
often he's going to. We're freezing the screen here after Rogers has already taken his eyes away from the route. It was obvious from the start that Watson didn't really know how to run this route, so Rogers looked elsewhere. We can see at this point that Watson is at the top of his route and the defender is all over him, confirming what Rogers knew and what we could see coming. Randall Cobb is also covered in the flash. Running back AJ Dillon had lined up as a receiver in a triple bunch and he falls down in his route. The other two receivers are running into the crowd in the middle of the field. From the end zone angle, we can see the pocket is being pushed back into Rodgers. This time he's got more space to work in so he can evade the pressure and escape through the pocket into the right flat. After initially falling down in his route, AJ Dillon then turns to follow Rodgers along the end zone. Dillon is a big back, but he's not built to run routes nor does he have a natural receiver skill set, so this really isn't his fault, but he doesn't sense where the space is. Rodgers sees the opportunity inside, so he's hoping his receiver will stop his momentum so he can catch the ball instead of running into the defender who's waiting from outside. A more natural receiving back, such as Nihal Himes for example, likely makes that adjustment for the touchdown, but instead, Rodgers' pass ends up flying through the end zone to fall incomplete because Dillon kept moving across the field. You can see Rodgers remonstrating his displeasure with the running back at the end of the play. This was not an isolated incident. Incident. Rogers is frustrated again at the end of this play. You can see him turn away from his receiver and vent for a moment after the ball falls incomplete. This play is the product of relying on inexperienced receivers. This is what Rogers is expecting to happen outside, but his rookie receiver, Watson again, isn't on the same page. He thinks he's supposed to block despite there not being another receiver behind him to catch the ball on the screen. Watson and Dubes were both very raw rookies, so the mental side of playing in the NFL didn't come easily to them. It's a common issue with young receivers and it's why the Packers deserve so much criticism for letting their offense reach the stage where they had to rely on them so much. Against the Minnesota Vikings, Rodgers suffers an unavoidable sack in large part because of a veteran receiver, Randall Cobb, who's on the other end of the spectrum in this regard. This time he begins to play under centre and the offense is trying to set up a shot play with a vertical route, a crossing route and a wheel route. The defense is playing man coverage outside and they have a single high safety who is going to stay home on the vertical route. Rodgers tight end won't even get level with the outside cornerback because he's too slow, so the whole success of the play comes down to Randall Cobb getting separation on his crossing route. He has a lot of space to work in. But Cobb is slow to release off the line and he tries a jab step to move the defender to the side. He's 32 now, and after all of his injuries, he no longer has any explosion. It's easy for the defender to stick to him through his route from start to finish. This shuts Cobb down. This is the stage of the route where Cobb comes closest to getting open. He's not actually open, but Rodgers could hit a tiny window to give him a chance at catching the ball low away from the defender if he throws the perfect pass. But Rodgers can't make that throw because Daniel Hunter is on top of him by this point. Rodgers turns to escape the first defender, but he's met by a second as his pass protection breaks down all around him. The Packers receivers issues are well known, but their offensive line this past season was also porous. Here the Rams are going to get premature pressure with a 3 man rush, something that should never happen. The Packers go to an empty set with slow developing routes spread across the field. The Rams don't disguise their 3 man rush, they put 8 defenders back off the line of scrimmage and the 3 pass rushers rush straight at the snap. When Rodgers hits the top of his drop, he looks right and has nobody open. You don't expect to have anyone open early in the play when the defense rushes 3, but you do expect to have time in the pocket to wait for someone to come open eventually. Rodgers comfortably hits the top of his drop, but we can see the pocket is quickly squeezed around him, forcing him to run through it and then ultimately throw the ball away. Excluding tight end Robert Tanyan since he didn't have any speed after his ACL tear, the only Packers receiving option who was in the prime of his career, the balance of experience and age, was Alan Lazard. Lazard would be a fine third or fourth option in most offences, but he suffers from inconsistency in his routes and he drops too many passes. So even when Rodgers has a receiver in the right spot at the right time, the play is still far too likely to result in no gain. Somehow, Rodgers managed to get this offence to the precipice of the playoffs despite the unit not being complemented by a great defence. The Packers are going to seek out another shot play against the Vikings on this play. This time, Rodgers will get a receiver in a position that he can throw to. He lines up under centre and will execute a play effect to his running back while Lazard fakes an end around behind him. There are two crossing fade condensing the middle of the field with an isolated vertical route wide to the left outside the numbers. The defense will blitz with a fifth defender while their cornerbacks outside play man coverage and everyone else drops into zone over the middle. There's a single high safety who Rodgers looks towards when he turns around to the top of his drop, but Rodgers also has a defender in position to sack him at this stage. He can't hold the ball and wait for his crossing routes to develop, so he has to hit the deep vertical outside. This ball is going to travel around 60 yards in the air. The pressure should make it an impossible throw for the quarterback, but he's still willing to stand in strong and he still has the arm strength to push the ball that far downfield with accuracy. Watson is in a better position here to be successful because this suits his skill set. He's on top of the defensive back without separating further than that downfield. Rogers ball gives him a chance at making the play at the catch point, but he can't bring it in as the defender sprawls over his inside shoulder. If the receiver showed greater strength at the catch point, this would have been one of the best touch on throws of the season. Here's a version of that throw that goes even deeper against the Detroit Lions. This time Rodgers will start to play on the left hash mark and throw to the receiver outside the numbers on the right side. The Packers keep a 6 pass protector 
in and use play action to give Rodgers a clean pocket. When he hits the top of his drop, he uses the time he has available to him to hold the deep safety in the middle of the field before turning to Lazard outside. Lazard has loads of space to work in and he gets level with the cornerback late in the route before working back to the ball inside. Although Lazard doesn't catch the ball, he worked his way through the cornerback so that he drew the pass interference penalty. Rodgers is standing on his own 43 yard line when he releases this ball and it reaches Lazard at the Lions 3 yard line. With the angle, that's around a 65 yard throw. Against the Miami Dolphins, we got to see what the play looks like when the receiver actually catches the ball, although this time it was thrown from the near hash mark and only travelled around 50 yards downfield. But it's not all about hitting bombs. A key component of being a good NFL quarterback is making plays work even when the design suggests they shouldn't. Rodgers bootlegs out of the pocket on this play and his eyes immediately go to the flat. Before we look at what happens downfield, let's look at Rodgers' eyes closely. You can see how he was always scanning the coverage after he breaks the pocket. He goes through his full progression twice before finding a receiver to throw to. So let's see what he was looking at. The first option we have is in the flat where the receiver is well covered. The second option is a deep out threatening the end zone. That receiver has a cornerback outside of him taking away the space. You can see the defender driving forward on his crossing route at the intermediate level, his third and final option in the play design. This play design only has three routes in it, but there is a fourth eligible receiver who is leaking out after executing his blocking assignment in the middle of the field. Rodgers has the awareness to locate him in space over the middle of the field and the comfort in his technique to throw the ball back across his body. The Miami Dolphins have been a notoriously aggressive defense in recent years. They blitz a lot. And the quarterback has to understand how to counter those blitzes. On this play, the Packers use a receiver in motion to pick up the edge rusher and they keep a tight end and running back in protection as well. Rodgers is anticipating man coverage in a heavy blitz. This is the way to counter that. That blitz comes and his pocket is clean because he set the offense up properly to counter it. But the trade-off is that he only has two receivers running routes downfield. Romeo Dubes releases into a crossing route from the top of the screen. But the aggressive coverage of the cornerback means he has to wrestle the defender off of him after getting into his route. Rodgers looks in his direction as the defender is falling to the ground and Dubes has come to a stop. From the end zone angle, we can see the effort Dubes has to go to to disengage with the defender and then we can see Rodgers point where he wants his receiver to redirect to. The quarterback then follows it up by perfectly laying the ball outside for his receiver to run through for a 22 yard gain. Similarly, the Rams are showing a cover zero blitz to Rodgers on this play. The Packers have spread the field out with a quick throw route combination on the left side and slow developing routes on the right side. While the defense is showing cover zero with everyone on the line of scrimmage and single coverage across the board, they will flip into cover one when the ball is snapped with the defender at the top of the screen changing into a man coverage assignment on the inside slot receiver so the safety behind him can drop into a deep zone. But while the offense plays cover one at the snap, by the time Rodgers is ready to throw in the pocket, they've added another wrinkle. One of the linebackers on the other side of the field drops out of his pass rush to become a robber in the middle of the field. It's no longer a blitz at all, but Rodgers is looking for his hot route on the slant. The dropping linebacker is directly in the passing lane to intercept accept the ball if Rodgers throws it on time. They're trying to bait the quarterback into a bad throw and a turnover. He doesn't throw it on time. Instead, Rodgers never panicked at the heavy blitz look, so he's poised enough to wait for his receiver to clear the first window on the left side of the dropping linebacker to hit him in the right window on the opposite side of the dropping linebacker. Rodgers threw 12 interceptions last year, and that's one fewer than his career high. It's not a good sign, but it's still the polar opposite of a reckless or sloppy quarterback. He still understands how to diagnose coverages and how to react to different defences. The Vikings attempt to confuse Rodgers in a different manner here. On the narrow side of the field, the near side to the camera, the Vikings are going to play man coverage of two defenders on two receivers. On the wide side of the field, they're putting five defenders in zone coverage to squeeze around the Packers' three receivers. Rodgers' route combinations are going to condense the field and play into the hands of the defence's coverage. He is going to look for his high-low combination that is being executed by his slot receivers on the wide side of the field. He has a curl route underneath a corner route, but the defense has so many defenders there that they can cover everything at once. Rodgers sees this and abandons the pocket. He didn't have a receiver attacking deep on the opposite side of the field where the space is, so instead he's forced to look for Aaron Jones, who improvised after initially running into the flat. This is a very difficult throw, but Rodgers drops it over the shoulder of his teammate. The problem here is actually Jones' technique catching the ball. He should watch the ball come over his shoulder into his hands in a lower spot instead of reaching up to try and catch it over his head. There was no need for him to meet it at its highest point because it was clearing the defender. This should have been a big play despite the defense winning in coverage initially. Rodgers made it work and found an outlet that should have benefited the offense. Even as he approaches 40 years of age, Rodgers can still make plays with his legs as a scrambler as well. On this play, the Vikings don't bite in the play fake so both receivers outside are covered. Rodgers recognizes this quickly and escapes the pocket, but he has nobody to throw to when a defender closing to him. He uses a pump fake to get that defender off his feet and then uses his acceleration to turn the corner and score the touchdown. On third and seven against the Dolphins, the defense covers all of Rodgers' receivers and gets pressure around the edge so that he's about to be sacked with nobody to throw the ball to. From the end zone angle, we can see how Rodgers feels the backside 
outside pressure late and then climbs in the pocket before breaking into a full sprint so he can escape through the running lane. He gains 12 yards on a first down. By hitting on draft picks and filling out their roster with smart moves, the Jets have put themselves in a position where they are ready to win now and they can afford to make an aggressive move at the quarterback position. That doesn't mean giving up a crazy trade package for Rodgers is a good idea, he's still approaching 40. But if it's one first round pick with a couple of seconds or thirds, then that's a move they have to make. It would be transformative for the franchise, even if it's only a Super Bowl window of one or two years. They're not going to be bad enough anytime soon that they can draft the first overall pick quarterback or top five quarterback. It's got to be free agents or trades, and Rodgers is better than any other option that they have.